All right, welcome back. Whitlock and Wiley, Eric Mangini and LeVar Arrington are back. Time now for a big story. Let's move to Cleveland, where all eyes will once again be on Baker Mayfield this year, whose brash style helped propel him to an outstanding rookie season and also landed him in public feuds with everyone from Hugh Jackson to our buddy Colin Cowher. But don't expect a different Baker this year with the quarterback saying in a recent profile, quote, I probably won't ever change. That's just me. I mean, there's growing up and lessons you learn throughout life. But, you know, I'm always going to be who I am and enjoy that. What I've done my whole life has gotten me here. There's obviously improvements and things I have to work on every day, but how I handle myself and how I approach it, that can't change. All right, question to you. Did <laughs> you ever do any classroom projects in front of the class? I mean, you imagine yourself doing that? Right mindset for Baker? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I love it. Um, Well-conditioned mindset and, and great returns on that mindset. And that mental makeup, what Baker possesses, brings juice. To a franchise that hasn't won a playoff game since 1994, you need a little life, need a little juice. And that's what he brings, uh, that presence. When we talk about the game of skill and greater game of will, where do you get that extra motivation, that extra layer? Because you've seen it. You've been in the locker room pregame. Football players have to go to a special place, almost a little psychosis, just to really psych yourself into going to battle. And Baker adds to that element just by his presence alone at the quarterback position. Imagine being in a fourth quarter game with Baker Mayfield, one possession away, and... He's under center. You just feel life from him, so I'm with him. He said he can make some tweaks here and there, but wholeheartedly stay who you are. I don't know very many great athletes or great performers or great achievers that haven't changed, that don't understand that the importance of, of not having an ego, of, of, of being able to recognize your weaknesses and, and push through those. I think one of the things that makes New England such a, a consistent franchise is they go into the season with... Who they hope to be and then they realize who they need to be mm. and they change and that's that's how they they're able to compete every single year and we all know the definition of insanity it's doing the same thing over and over again look if you want to go down the first series of of, of uh, a preseason game and score a touchdown and then celebrate like you won the super bowl yeah that that's great maybe that's the energy you need but but don't be surprised when people respond to that and want to shut that stuff down. I think, I think change is an important part of maturity and self-awareness. Yeah, it's, a, it's evolution. That's human nature. So I agree with you there. And I agree with you as well in terms of being that, that person, that symbol that, that gives you belief. Personally, looking at, at the way he's handling things and all of the scrutiny that, that is on him, he's a polarizing figure. So people are, are looking at him beyond what the game represents. And I think personally, looking at... His response, that's a, I want to cuss y'all out. I, I really want to tell y'all how I feel. But since I'm not going to do that, because that could cost me here, here, and there, I'm just really going to keep it to, you know what, I'm not going to change. So it's a generalized statement. I think it's a tongue-in-cheek statement. I don't think for two seconds Baker really buys into the fact that I'm not going to change. I think he does subscribe to the fact that he needs to evolve as he grows within the league. He just got married. That says change. Your, mm -hmm. show, your actions say change. So I, you can say what your words are, and, and I look at it as mm -hmm. just words. I, I think he is an, a, a guy who understands that he needs to flow like the water trying to make it down the hill. Well, he is the quarterback. He does set a tone for that team. Uh, they did just add Odell Beckham Jr., a guy who's been a great productive player but needs to make some changes, I think, to be a more mature uh, player that c contributes to a winning environment. And Baker could help set that tone by acknowledging that, you know what, even me, Baker Mayfield, and I've had success. I won a Heisman Trophy. I walked on two places. I, but I'm not perfect. And so when I hear people say, I'm not going to change, I'm never going to change, it's like, well, I'm perfect. And, and I just haven't met that person yet. Uh, that is perfect. We're all in need of change. And so I, I wish that he would say it a little different and believe a little different. And I know he's had a tremendous amount of success. And success is the greatest intoxicant. And you throw on money and fame on top of that, and, and I don't blame him for going, man, why would I change? Well, but, I've lived 52 years. You got to. Well, I mean, using your example in Belichick, who really leads that situation and program, he's not changing. 
He's consistent in his messaging. He's consistent in, in his ways. He's consistent in his approach. And that stability is what you start to buy into it. Now, it's successful, so why would he change it? And then you look at Baker, he's like, this is successful as well. The only difference is likability in the way I'm doing it. Maybe it doesn't, it strikes you different. It's polarizing. So therefore, you don't see it. But this isn't a guy who loses himself because he celebrates. This is a guy who's like, I, he won the Heisman. He became the number one overall pick. He's brought juice to this franchise. No, he hasn't won a Super Bowl yet. It's going into his second year. But if we're going to now start to demerit him by the way he goes about his process, I don't see where we really can pull him apart yet. Well, no. I go ahead. I'm just, just, just to react to, to the Belichick comment, Bill Belichick coached the, the 34 defense since 1985. And then after they lost the second Super Bowl to the Giants, he was willing to switch to a 4-3. To me, if that's not the epitome of willingness to change something that you've done for years and years and dramatically shift a philosophy, but he knew that was the best thing for the organization and the team at the time. I see Baker Mayfield as a guy who's had tremendous success. Things have gone well for him, and he's so sensitive to criticism now. What's it going to be like when it gets tough? What's it going to be like when they hit those two or three game losing streaks, when the criticism starts to mount up? You better change because it, it doesn't go well all the time for everybody. I, I'm going to say the other thing, and we're going to pass on Darnell's question. I'm going to say the other thing that uh, about Belichick, the difference between Belichick and Baker Mayfield is Belichick may probably be the most arrogant person on the planet privately. Publicly, this dude bays himself in humility. His whole, his tone of voice, he never gets loud. Everything about him publicly, and then maybe it's a little smug, some of his answers, but I see a guy that's really pretty humble uh, about his approach, and I see a guy in Baker Mayfield that seems a bit over the top and arrogant. And let me ask you, how many points does the public score on every any given Sunday? Excuse Zero. Me? The public. The public. Yeah. How many? How are we helping? No, no, We're no. We're not helping. So for that, that's that's part of stick. That's I want you guys to think X, and I'm going to do Y. He can't coach that same way that he gives his public messaging because that's too short. That's no content. And he does just the opposite in closed doors. He has an actual game plan, and they dive into details. He never dives into the details with, with us as the public. So for Baker Mayfield to say, I'm going to be transparent or closer to who I am in script publicly and privately, I don't think we should go out there and take a shot at it. You know, I think it's valuable to look at the Baker Mayfield aspect from this, this perspective as well. You, you mentioned Odell Beckham. He doesn't want Odell to change. So I don't think he wants to put out there the message of, Odell, I'm changing, so I think you should change. I really believe that they look at who they are, what identity they're trying to build, and they buy into it. I think Jarvis is a very mature person. I think that Odell is a very mature person from what I gather from them. I don't know Baker very well, but if their work ethic matches what they're going to bring to the field, then I don't think that being colorful personalities, I mean, I think back to the Rams team with Tori and all those guys and Oz Hakeem and how much fun they had and how they joked around and did a lot of things. This is just that 2.0, really, in my opinion. Coming up, Jay-Z just inked a huge new deal with the NFL, but is he actually being a hypocrite? Darnell's question of the day. Ooh. Next! Ooh.